this is Andy Tube. This video is going to be about the rear cover of a Singer Model 353 Genie and the different parts that are attached to the cover. Uh, I was originally going to do some bobbin winding needle threading videos but I have some on my channel for this machine from a number of years ago. Uh, I wanted to make new ones, but I'll do that at the end of this series. And since I already have this cover off, uh, I did the video of removing all the covers. I wanted to talk about this one. I'm going to use this in ex as, as an example of about uh, cleaning and, and removing uh, scuff marks and, and things like that. So, uh, what this video is going to be about is the bobbin winding tension disc and the top thread guide which is part of a clip a slip on clip that holds the mounting base for the bobbin winder tension disc And it's going to be about this handle. And this is where I owe an apology because I said in the earlier video about how the plastic had, had turned yellow but this didn't because it was a different type of plastic. And um, yeah, I got a good reminder working on this. This handle is made of metal and it's painted. And it's painted like, like the metal sewing bed is steel. This handle is steel, not plastic. And it's going to be about the steel uh, mounting bracket uh, for the handle. Okay, and then we're going to talk about the pop-up or ter uh, periscoping spool pin for the thread spool. and uh, how it works down down in here and it's going to be about the bobbin winder bracket and spindle okay and the the parts under here So I'm going to take these uh, parts all off and then I'm going to clean the back cover and the parts and put them back on and just talk about them a little bit as we go. Put this back down so I don't break it. So <clears throat> this um, tension disc, bobbin winder tension disc is used only when you wind the thread onto the bobbin and it's like a little steel cup with uh, um, like a washer and a spring in there and then and then the mounting screw right here and the idea is that little spring inside the cup gives a springing motion to this to put just the right amount of tension onto the bobbin wind the, the thread as it goes to the bobbin winder okay and uh, if you don't have any, you know, if you pull on it and you don't feel it spring back and you're not getting that, uh, it's usually dirty. Uh, I think one time in a tension disc like this, I found a broken spring one time. So usually it's just full of lint and dust and stuff and uh, you can clean it out. Some people just try and clean it out with an air hose, you know, or a can of that blasting air. And I just, it's just so simple to do this, to take it off. And you don't have to remove this cover uh, from the machine to do that. You just take your screwdriver and turn left many, 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 many times and it will unscrew from the base. Okay?
and then let me just show you that base now and you and you'll you'll see that the screw has gone out of it now okay and if you want you can pull this clip off of that spread the arms a little and pull it off and you can remove this metal adjusting base will push right up out of the cover but I, I've never really done that I don't see any reason to do that unless uh, you were replacing if this had broke off or something but uh, this I don't even disassemble I just will take it and I'll soak it in a little uh, crud cutter solution or alcohol or even just soapy water to soften and up any dirt and lint and stuff in there and wash it out under pressure from like the kitchen sink and uh, dry it with a blow dryer and I'll, I'll be showing you how I do that with these parts okay so there's the bob and winder tension disc out and if you don't have tension on that it's worth taking out and cleaning because you want a nice smooth bobbin winding because that thread has to come off you know every stroke when you sew and you want it to come back off the bobbin smoothly and evenly so you get a nice stitch now this handle bracket back here is uh, let me see if I can get a good spot here to work on it eh. Maybe I'll try it like this way. Yeah. So, uh, the way this is held uh, to the handle is with a steel pin that goes through the back of it and into little holes on the handle. So, um, if I if I lift this up a little bit and I'm gonna come up here and and just gently wiggle this and push it part way into the top to get this out now you can see the pin better back here right and then uh, let's see sometimes I can just do it with your fingertips but you can take a little plier and and just uh, push it out towards the bobbin uh, winder. See it coming out there now. And I push, I push the handle in a little bit to get clearance because it's it's too long to push out. It'll hit the side, and this way it'll hit the bobbin winder. But if you push the handle in, you know, an inch or so, you'll get past there. And you can just pull that pin right out because you don't you don't want to bend it, right? And then here is the bracket itself. And if if you saw my covers video, you know that this uh, this is a mounting bracket for the handle um, to the cover and also to uh, the machine because when you slide it on this metal parts here go into some clips uh, maybe I can show that here. let me see I'll turn this around so you're looking at the back of the machine now and uh, when that handle uh, goes on let's see it would be like like we do it'll go on and it will go in here like that See how it slides right into these clips here? So that's what's really giving you the support. Um, so all the weight is on this steel bracket and not the metal handle or the plastic cover. So that's, that's how easy that uh, comes off. It's no big deal. And then uh, if we want to, we can... Uh, pull the handle up out of the cover and my advice is just little increments at a time and, and just uh, 
evenly pull it out. If you pull one, one side before the other, it kind of gets caught in there. And it's just a nice uh, metal, metal handle. So excuse me in the other video for saying a different kind of plastic. <laughs> now, the next thing we're going to look at is the uh, spool pin, what I call uh, periscoping. I think maybe Singer called it pop up um, because you just pull it up and it kind of clicks into place a little bit and then you just push it down and it goes back in there so when you're carrying it around you don't have to worry about snagging it on something and then inside here I'll turn it upside down so you can see it better but there it is with this sticking down into the machine when, when you have it collapsed in on the top it looks like that and Let's see again a pointer here. Um, this plastic mm, guide or base for it is held to the cover by an uh, interior tooth clip washer. And I, I don't take that off unless this has been broken and I'm replacing the whole unit. Now to to keep the spool pin in there, there's a hitch pin in there, and there's a little there's a little uh, so you can see there's a little groove or slice into that plastic mounting piece that the hitch pin goes, and then the hitch pin will click into these uh, cutouts on the pin, and that's what keeps it up or uh, down and that you can remove you just don't want to lose it because it's a little pin but I wanted to show you what that looks like just pull it straight off see I'll put this let's see where is it here there so it's called a hitch pin and you pull it off and just push it on. Oops. I'm going to go put it in one of my mag dishes so I don't lose it. Now, with that out, there's nothing to stop the pin from going in or out of the support bracket. So I like to uh, clean this out if I have the cover off because you know junk gets in there and then the the pin gets kind of sticky and stuff like that so I like to just clean it out good so I'll be doing that at the kitchen sink and clean this off and uh, now I've got this uh, bobbin winder spindle and the other little part here is called the stop latch and you see it's it's just an elongated piece of plastic and it's just screwed right through the cover and it's got a little rectangular metal retaining clip it screws into but the stop latch is so that when you put a bobbin on here and, and move it over where you adjust this into the bobbin uh, is how much the bobbin will fill before the spindle stops turning and the way it stops turning is as the thread fills up the bobbin and reaches the edge of the stop lash it's just going to start pushing this away enough that the tire or friction ring can't rub on the back of the hand wheel anymore so it stops automatically now some people use this and some some don't but you can adjust it by loosening this screw and just swiveling it in or out of um, a bobbin 
to see where you want to fill if you want to use a stop auto stop and then underneath here you see we, we do have our friction ring our rubber tire which I'm just gonna peel right off here because I'm gonna replace it it's it's not too bad but when I you know I, I can buy it for a buck or so so I'll just uh, replace that and this uh, system it's held and mounted by uh, this bracket here is mounted by one screw right here and then a loop that just goes on to the top of a plastic post I mean, maybe if I can turn this around here and uh, it's got a hinge screw on a system here and I think it's got a little sp spring or something in there because when you when you push it one way or the other it actually kind of clicks in there See? like that but this also can get dry and dusty and dirty and so I like to again if I have the covers off uh, I'm going to uh, take that off when I do a restoration and clean it and maybe put a little lube on there and stuff like right now the spindle just it is so hard to turn I mean it is very hard to turn and it should just you know roll real free um, so let's let's just take this off by taking a screwdriver again and putting it in the one screw a mounting screw and we'll remove that screw and then we can lift off the bracket from these posts and then push the spindle on through you've got to get this slipped up off of that post a little bit I'm trying to remember I did it the other day and it was like yeah, if, if I turn the bobbin uh, spindle, winder spindle, away from the latch, which would be towards the front of the machine, then I'm able to lift this slip-on part off. And then once it's off, I can just pull the whole thing out. Okay. So there you can see the little, kind of like a square, or a rectangle nut that this is uh, screwed to and I usually don't take it apart to clean it or anything in this post that the the screw goes into you see it's got a metal there it's got a metal insert inside so it's very strong to hold the bobbin winder and the spool pin holder like I said has one of those interior teeth hmm clip washers I guess you can pry them off and push them back on and I get if you damage it you can probably find one at the hardware store but I just don't see any need if this hasn't been damaged um, to do it I had to replace one one time where somebody had left the the spool pin sticking up and was carrying it and caught it on something putting it in the back of their car and just bent the pin over and broke the bracket so I found a seller on eBay and replaced it for her but there's the cover right I don't know if you can with the lighting in here if you can see there's some kind of a hard white looks like paint or something here might be a scuff and there's some scuff marks here and here on this cover a couple small ones up here at the top so I'm going to wash wash it and then uh, if those all don't come off I'm going to use like a uh, plastic uh, polisher gently to see if I can get them off and then I'm going to clean and degrease all these uh, other metal parts and then we'll put it back together 
So uh, let me set up by my kitchen sink here and then we can do the cleaning. Okay, I'm set up at my sink here to, to do this uh, cleaning. And you know, while I was bring, when I was bringing stuff in here, like the parts and, and everything, I, I remembered I've had a half a dozen or so uh, viewers uh, email me about the uh, crud cutter cleaner and that they have a very high sensitivity to chemicals and they just are not interested in using it and have asked me what else did I think that they could use and uh, this is what I've suggested uh, this is uh, ultra joy lemon scented concentrated uh, degreasing detergent a spoonful cleans a sink full. Hey, okay. So, um, you don't need a lot of it to clean this muck off of uh, cases and sewing machines and stuff. As an example, I bought this at the Kroger in 2005. And I've still got, uh, you know, a couple inches left out of that. So, I'm going to just uh, put some warm water in the sink and add this, okay? Okay, then I'm going to soak these uh, parts in here. Now I don't have the little mounting screw for the bracket and I definitely do not have that little hitch pin because I'll lose it down the drain or something for sure. So I'm going to have to run my water a little deeper to get it up high enough to cover those parts. Then I have one of my wife's uh, used you know, little kitchen sponge with a soft scrubby on one side. She puts them in this little basket down there when she, when she uh, doesn't want to use them anymore, and then I know I can. So that's that's uh, pretty much what I'm going to do with this. Instead of using the crud cutter, I'm going to uh, use just the dish soap on this and uh, so let me try this uh, white stuff whatever this is no nope. How about this uh, smudge? I'm sure it's... Oh, here's some more paint. Maybe that's paint or... Uh, it's some kind of scuff mark, you know, from rubbing up against something. Now, this one is mostly coming off. That dark one. That's the one I was worried about the most. Okay, let's see if this white one's... I know it's going to be hard for you to see, so that came off. Now the crud cutter, that can uh, help remove latex paint from clothing and stuff, if you ever have that. Let's try this. Okay, I don't think I'm going to have to use any of the plastic uh, polish to get these scuff marks out. Let's see up here. You see my water's leaking out. I must not have put the stopper in too good here. So even though this uh, machine was probably left out in a sunny sewing room or, or family room or something and it's really faded like I said the outside is a yellow I shouldn't say faded let's call it yellow uh, 
one of the worst I've seen. The machine itself, as far as scratches and scuffings and stuff like that, uh, fewer than average. And I can see that that joy just took it right off. So I'm going to set it aside for a minute now, and I'm going to just get these parts, and I'm going to look at the handle, and it's just going to be just like washing a dish, I guess, you know. I got everything rinsed here and starting to drip dry and while I can't clean up the kitchen sink uh, I'll let most of the water drip off of that and then what I've got is just my my $15 hair dryer here and I will blow dry especially these uh, metal parts and I see somehow I forgot to bring the bobbin winder tension disc. So I'll go and get that and I will just soak it a little bit in this soapy water while I dry this stuff and then uh, spray it out with water and blow dry it. When I get everything finished, clean and dried, I'll go back to my workbench. Okay, I have everything clean and dry now and I'll just uh, put it back in and make sure everything is working well. The uh, back case cleaned up real nice. I didn't need to use any of the plastic polish. So uh, for those of you who care about it, at the very end of the video I'll do a little piece on one of the other covers because I have other marks on there and I'll show you how I use the plastic polish if I need to if it won't come off with just the general cleaning. So to put this um, bobbin winder tension disc back in here I just need to screw it back in and I got everything uh, nice and dry here with the hair dryer and I got all the muck off of everything so uh, <clears throat> As usual, I, when I'm going to put a screw in after degreasing anything, I'll just put a tiny drop of oil there so that the new connection is lubricated a little bit. And uh, I'll screw this back in. And I'll tell you how to adjust this. Um, the height of this tension disc determines how evenly the thread winds on the bobbin. So when I put it in here I'm going to turn it in as far as it'll go and uh, that is not correct. There's still a tension, I mean on the spring, you know, there's still a little springing and stuff, but if I left it there when I used it to wind the bobbin all the thread would go towards the bottom of the bobbin. It would not wind evenly. So, let's see. One half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, six and a half, seven. Getting pretty loose. One half, one, one and a half, two, Two and a half, three. So I'll put it about midway, just as a starting point. But when I get the machine all back together, I'll do a test bobbin winding. I'll take some thread and thread it up, and start winding a bobbin. And if it, if the, you know, thread goes up and down 
inside the bobbin and winds evenly, then great. My guesstimation was good enough. If it winds too high towards the top of the bobbin unevenly, then I'll take the screwdriver and I'll start turning this down in. And when you're winding the bobbin slowly, you can make adjustments while you're winding it. If most of the thread starts going to the bottom of the bobbin, that means the height of this is too low. So I will start turning it left to raise it up. So if the thread is too high, you screw it in a little bit lower. If the thread goes on the bobbin too low, you turn it left to, to raise this or bring it up to the height. Once you get it where you want, it'll, it'll stay there. So you just have to kind of uh, manually adjust that, okay? And then like I also do on uh, uh, my metal parts after I do any kind of washing or degreasing is I'm going to put some oil uh, in a little cup and get on a little uh, cheap artist brush here. And I just put a light coating on these little pieces of metal. Just a real light little coating. That's all. That's just a habit that I've done over the years. So, we're good. We're all set with that. So let's look at the handle now. I've got my handle uh, cleaned up and ready to put back in. So this is the back and it's going to sit like that, right? So I'm going to stick it in uh, farther than normal. I'm going to push it in about halfway, like about like that, because this has to stick out enough to get the pin in, right? And I'm just going to turn it around like so. And I'm going to take the bracket, and the way to remember how the bracket is, see those uh, loops with holes right there? That sits on top of the uh, hole for where the screws come in. So that's how this is going to go, just like, like this. And then we'll put the pin in. But just like the other metal, I'm just going to put a very light coating of oil. Uh, you know, it's very dry here in Arizona, the desert where I live. But people that live in uh, more humid climates or where you get more rust, this is especially a good idea. Just a real light coating of sewing machine oil. Now a lot of times for this, I'll just use the less expensive uh, Singer brand machine oil. It's basically just real pure mineral oil. Um, you know, I won't use the Triflow with the Teflon because it's not so much metal on metal moving parts. Just wipe up a little bit of the excess here, okay? And then I'll get this ready to... Uh, to put back in can kind of go like that once I get it ready and I'll take my little pin now as far as I can tell this pin is the same it's just a, a straight pin you know it doesn't have any special way to go in one way or the other so, I'll put some oil on there and rub it in. And then I will start with, let's see, I'll turn it upside down was easier. No, I'll, I'll do it this way because I've, I've got a big opening over this way. So, I'll put the bracket between the handlebars, so to speak, and then I'll start this right in. So it's going to go right through here, right? And it's going to go across the back and it's going to come out the hole on the other end and into the hole in the handle. And that's that's what keeps 
keeps everything together there. Very, very simple. And this is really easy to do now that, that the whole bobbin winder thing is out of the way. It's a lot easier. Now, when I get, oops, when the screwdriver, when I get over by this end, there's not much to hang on to here, right? So, if you can grab it in the back here with your fingertips and maneuver it, or I just use, because uh, of my clumsiness, I'm just going to grab it with my needle nose and line it up and gently put it in. Now, it's a little stubborn about going in because you can't see exactly where you're lining it up. And the tendency that I have whoop, is just like that. <laughs> is I push it hard enough, it goes in here, and then it comes out on this end. So that's very... Uh, well, I'm dropping all kinds of stuff. That's very common, so I'm just giving you a warning for that. So let me come back to this side and see if I can line it up with the hole in the metal bracket. Mm -hmm. and then line that up with the hole in the handle and this time I this time I was a little more gentle and I've got it properly okay now it's not the handle isn't in uh, I mean the bracket isn't in place for the holes yet because I pushed the handle in remember so I'm going to pull the handle out to the normal place but you can see that these little fingers come off the bracket and they rest underneath the edge of the handle. Okay. And then I'll just gently push that back up. It's going a lot easier now because everything is clean. Okay. Now when I go to slide this back on the machine now the holes in the bracket will, will line up with the holes for the screw under here, right? And it'll go back together very easy. So I'll, I'll show that in a later video, but basically I just need to slide it on the back of the machine so that that bracket goes in the clips on the top of the machine, and then it'll be good to go. So now let's work on this uh, spool pin, right? And it's going to be real easy. We just take this spool pin. Now if you notice, there's uh, indentation too in the, in, uh, off center here, not in the middle. But you see there's, there's one at each end for that hitch pin, kind of, and stuff. But there's, there's one that... There's a short section here, I guess, which is the top that sticks out of the machine. And this longer section is what goes into the cover. So I'm just going to take it from the top and put it in there. And you'll see it come in. See it? So you see that indentation. And I don't know if you'll be able to see about halfway up that plastic uh, retaining the housing, there's a cut in the plastic. You're close, then I gotta find my a hitch pin. Okay. So now this, you see how this side comes out, right? And this straight part is what I'm going to put in the slit in the plastic that post at any height to put this on so I'll just put it about halfway in and I'm going to slip on my hitch pin just like so so that that straight side of the pin is in the slot. 
of the plastic. And the curved side of the pin is around the other side. Then when I pull this down, that uh, hitch pin will pop right in and stop it. Like that. Okay. So I'm up on the top now and it's sturdy. If I push it in, then remember the, the notch in the middle now is held there by the hitch pin so this only sticks up a fraction of an inch and it and it's sturdy it doesn't you know doesn't fall out so that's all there is to putting that back in I would have the pin in there to, to however far you want before I put the hitch pin on because if the hitch pin was too far in you might catch it with the edge of the pin when when you were trying to stick it back in and bend the pin. So just get the pin in there to whatever length and slide that hitch pin on so that it goes in the groove cut in the plastic. All right. Great progress, huh? All right. So what's left here for me is this um, the bobbin winder bracket and spindle right and after uh, after washing and drying it it looks almost like there's a little bit of moisture left in there but um, what I wanted to say was this now turns a little bit where, where before it, it was so hard it turns a little bit but it just needs a couple drops of oil and where to put the oil with the tire you know you off you can see it here is right in there you can see where the spindle comes through to the hub for the friction ring and right here at the base of this bigger cylinder okay because the smaller cylinder with the, sp the spindle is what turns in here so that's where we're trying to get the oil now you don't want to over oil this because you'll be throwing oil out onto the tire which will then uh, get on the tire and then be slippery on the back of the hand wheel when you're trying to wind the bobbin. But this is very common that this gets all stiff and mucked up because it sticks out of the top of the machine so it's always getting uh, dust and dirt down in there, right? So we'll just take a little uh, sewing machine oil and I'll drop a drop down here under the hub and I'll drop a drop right here at the top of that bigger cylinder and look it just went right down in there okay there we go see it's all over my hand already but there we go now it's turning real easy look at that mm -hmm. so that's all it takes just clean out what we could and dry it and then we'll put some oil in there to lubricate the cylinder and then I am going to like the other metal parts I'm going to brush this with a light coating of oil but since there is this uh, hmm, hinge screw in here that allows this the spindle lever to move back and forth I'm gonna put a drop of oil down in here too now you could take this apart if this was really stuck together or rusted you could take out this screw and clean it and polish stuff inside but I don't see the need for this machine uh, be, uh, I mean for this piece because it it's inside the machine so it doesn't get too bad I know in the humid or salt water.
you, you could have some rust and you may need to take out that a hinge screw and clean it on the inside. So I'll just put a drop of oil down in there where it hinges. Uh -huh. Make sure I get that in there good and I'll exercise it back and forth. And look, I just tried to put one drop, but look, it, it gets it gets all over. You know? <laughs> so just like when I oil the machine, I'm going to wipe up any excess because you don't want excess all over the all over everything because it's just going to attract dust and dirt and lint. So we've got the oil on the metal to metal area, which is exactly where it should be. Now, I I want to replace this. It's it's getting a flat spot. I'm I think it would work, but you know I'm restoring it so. What I do is if I twist it like this, if it will, some of them are just so brittle they crumble. But if I look then and see if there's cracks that show up, little stress cracks, I don't think you'll be able to see it on the camera, but I can see them. So this, this is actually, you know, supple and it works. So I'll put it in my emergency <laughs> um, box of these. But I'm just going to put a new one on, and I have some different uh, sizes. So let me find one here that is comparable. This is a little fatter, and it's like a little smaller circumference. I think I can do better. Now I'm not too worried about, about the size of the, the hole, because they'll stretch pretty good. Let's see this one. This is even a smaller circumference or diameter there. That's that's too small. I think that's for the 500 and 503. It takes that smaller bobbin. And then this one. Let's see. That looks about the closest in size. It looks like it might be a little fatter. But it looks pretty good, so I'm going to try that one. Uh, one five two. One five two. Five seven a. Not all of them come with numbers. <laughs> uh, and then to put it on, you just start start one side of it onto that hub and stretch it around. Whoop, like that. See what I mean? So if the even if the hole looks a little bit small. You know, it's going to stretch onto the hub. So, you get this position here and get my screwdriver that I dropped on the floor. <clears throat> okay. And then let's see if we can find my screw for it. Mm -hmm. Now remember where I said that this uh, plastic post that you screw into has a metal insert, right? So I'm going to be putting a metal screw into that metal round nut, so I'm going to put a drop of oil in there. Now when we go to put this back onto the cover, we'll see the wheel's going to go up and I had this to the left so that I could maneuver the spindle through the hole if I remember right. So let's get that in there and get this side up on the loop. Doesn't want to go in all the way. Let's get it more back in the middle, maybe. Oh, there, I had to push this back a little bit to get it 
the metal loop onto the plastic post. Now it's lined up well. Uh, let's see, where's my screw here? Get this screw back in there. There we go. Get my regular screwdriver just to tighten it down in there good. Now, let's take a look at it up here. See if it operates. Yep. Okay, that is the rear cover and about all of the other parts that are attached to it. So if you want to see um, some plastic polishing and how I do it, hang on here. Uh, if not, thanks for tuning in and I hope you'll come back and see me. Okay, I've got part of the front cover now, and it had this long, um, not a scratch, but a big dark scuff mark here, a couple different colors. And these, uh, sometimes I find hard to get out. Uh, it went well with the back cover, but if they won't come off when you're using just a liquid detergent or something like a, a degreaser, um, this is what I usually use and it's just a, a headlight restore for clear lenses but it's a, a fairly mild uh, plastic polisher because I don't you know if I if I take the shine off the cover make a big dull streak here that's not much better than just having um, you know a scuff mark <clears throat> now I also have used this Novus number two fine scratch remover, which is um, yeah, it's it's more of a finer polish than the Rain X. Um, usually, I use that to polish something to make it shiny, um, and it works well for that. the The problem is this two ounce bottle of this Novus costs more than this five ounce bottle of the Rain X. So if I can get the scuff mark or scratch out with the rain -X, I usually do that first. Now, I just use an old sock. Um, you know, just an old sock piece. And I'll fold it up so I can get like a finger stuck in there. Now the directions say to get the clamp, the cloth damp. And I have found if you're trying to polish a big area, that that is very good advice because these polishes tend to dry up quickly and then they don't do you any good. But on a smaller area like this, I usually don't get, get it damp. And what I'll do is come along here and put the polish on. And, and my approach is uh, as gently as possible. Right, if I can get it out with a lighter touch, that's what I'll do. And uh, this isn't budging much. <laughs> this is my experience with these darker scuff marks on this old plastic from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. So I'll come back and I'll use a little bit more pressure on it. Uh, again, I don't really want to scrub it, you know, because I've done it very hard and, and, and managed to get the uh, scuff mark out. Then when I wash it and dry it, I've got this big old dull spot on, on the plastic. It's like, oh, that looks almost as bad as a scuff mark. You kind of expect a scuff mark on, on something this old, you know, 40, 50 years old. But you don't expect a big old weird looking dull spot. Let me try a little bit more of this because it's already drying up. And I have had cases where I've used the Rain-X to remove scuff marks and 
light surface scratches and it left it a little bit dull then I've come back with that Novus which is like a finer much finer grit and uh, kind of polished up the area that I scuffed up but I've also on a, on a bad one just tried using the Novus and to me it's just too too gentle it uh, doesn't want to get down and get these scuff marks out this is starting to look pretty good now so my patience and light light polishing versus uh, scrubbing has paid off I think and it's a little tricky too when you've got these uh, plastics that have yellowed from age you know it's a little tricky trying to find the right pressure and stuff because you don't want it to appear lighter than sometimes you can't help it uh, let me get a damp cloth now and wipe that polish off and we'll see how it looks okay I just found an old terry cloth washcloth and I'll come in here and be sure I get all that polish off of there wow that actually came out very nice I think Let's see, I find something to dry it here. I turned off my big LED overhead light trying to be able to show this without as much glare. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you can see when I'm looking at it right in the light, the, the glossy look is still there, no problem. And I didn't uh, affect the coloring that I can see. The only thing I see is that that blue and black uh, smudge and stuff is gone, totally gone. That's great. And I have another little blue fleck here. And I've also used this, like I have some little scratches down in here like that and I've used the polish crossways on those scratches and then in circles sometimes they're too deep and to get them out I would really have to scuff the whole area but um, I'm happy even if I can reduce them by like 50 percent or, or more without changing the glossy finish so I am happy with that I'll probably try it on this marking pen you know next that somebody put on there and see if I can get that off but that's that's um, my approach to removing those kind of scuffs and light scratches on these old Singer plastic cases is the uh, rain -X headlight restore and the Novus uh, number two fine scratch remover to kind of polish it back up if I have to. So there you go, if that was interesting to you. Either way, thanks for tuning in to Andy Tube. I, I uh, hope it was worth your time, and I hope that you'll come back and visit my channel when you have more time. Take care now.